Hey guys, today we'll cover the spin tool. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for new general. No need to save the file we've been working on. And in this lesson, we're going to cover a new tool called the spin tool. Now we'll start with a default cube here, press tab to switch to edit mode and click once in space to deselect everything. Then let's take a look at what the tool names are again, hover over the side of the toolbar. So you get the arrows pointing in both directions, click, hold down and drag it out until you can see the names of everything. We've covered add cube, extrude, inset, and bevel so far. We're gonna skip loop cut and knife for now. We'll cover those in a future lesson. We'll also skip poly build for now, and we'll jump forward to the spin tool. So click on the spin tool to select it, and you'll notice you get this cursor here, this blue cursor. Now, before we worry about that, let's go ahead and think about what exactly we wanna start with in terms of what geometry we wanna use the spin tool on. Now, of course, you won't understand what to choose yet because you're not aware of what the spin tool does. But let's select the entire cube so we can get a sense for what it does if we select everything. And then we'll talk more about the parts and pieces and how we can use the spin tool differently. So to select the entire cube, go up and switch to wireframe view mode. For me, when I switch to wireframe, it's also popping x-ray view on. That's what I want. Make sure that's on. Press three across your top row of number keys to switch to the face selection mode. Then click and drag a selection box around the entire cube. Then you can turn off wireframe mode, or in other words, you can turn back on solid shading by clicking just to the right. For me, that's toggling off x-ray. You'll want that toggled off as well. Now for the spin tool, You'll notice this blue cursor here. Go ahead and click and hold down and begin to spin and you'll see something strange going on here. You're taking this entire box and you're spinning what appear to be copies of this shape around the center of itself. Go ahead and let go. That's a little confusing. So let's undo by holding control and pressing Z. So it turns out that the spin tool is going to almost be like extruding geometry, but it's going to be doing it about some sort of center point. And in this case, it will be starting around the 3D cursor. So let's move the 3D cursor and see how this would change. I'm gonna zoom back a bit, hold down shift in the center mouse wheel to move the view over. And then over just to the side here, Hold down shift and right click, and that will change where that 3D cursor is. Now let's try this again. Hover over that blue plus icon, click, hold down and drag. And notice now you're spinning around the 3D cursor. And if you keep dragging around, if you drag far enough, go ahead and drag all the way out here, you'll see that it almost appears like you're making copies. So you can let go. And what's happening here is it is taking the geometry that we selected. In this case, we selected all of the faces of this cube, which also gets its edges and vertices. And we're spinning it, or it's like we're extruding it in a way. And if we go far enough around, it starts to separate itself here. To make this more clear, click on the adjust last operation panel. First of all, you'll see steps. If you click and hold down and drag this to the left, there will be less copies of that geometry. So notice we have four steps or four copies of that geometry. Or if you slide it to the right, it will fill it in such that there are, in this case, I've got 54 steps or 54 copies of that geometry. You'll see here, I can also control how 
uh, far the angle goes. So I can click and drag this left or right to adjust the number of degrees. I'll let go. The center XYZ, by default, this is where the 3D cursor is. But if you click and drag on this, you can now change where the center of this rotation is happening. And it's no longer centered on that 3D cursor. So you could change this after the fact. And then finally, the axis XYZ, if you click and drag on this and move it around, you'll notice that the axis will change along the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Okay, so while this is all pretty interesting looking, it's still somewhat confusing when and how and why you'd want to use the spin tool. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. So let's undo back a step to before we spun that entire cube. And while it might be the case that you would think through wanting a few copies of this cube around, what's more likely is that you're going to want to spin individual pieces of geometry. So that could be a vertex, an edge, or a face. Let's take a look at each. So let's switch to vertex selection mode. Press one on the top row of number keys. Click once in white space and then click once on this top vertex to select it. Then go ahead and click to drag the spin tool cursor icon around and let go. And you'll notice that you're spinning a number of vertices. This is the number of steps that's in here. So 54 vertices are being spun around this point and there are little edges drawn in between them. Now, while this isn't too useful based on our current Blender skills, we could have instances in the future where we would want to create vertices and then later use them to help us with other modeling tasks. But let's go ahead and undo back. Something that could be slightly more useful right now, let's switch to edge selection mode. Press two on the top row of number keys and click once on this top outside edge. Then let's go ahead and click and drag to spin that edge around. We could see how this is a little more useful. We're spinning 54 edges in between those edges. It's filled with faces. And you could see how this would help us develop some sort of circular pathway. And as we saw before, you could even start thinking about changing the axis in the X, Y, or Z directions to do some interesting curving of a path. Let's go ahead and undo back again. And let's see what happens if we spin just a single face. So press three on your keyboard, click once on this outside face to select it. And then again, click and hold down on that spin cursor and now you're spinning, again, 54 steps, or that face is being copied 54 times, essentially. Really, it's just dragging this along so that now you have an object that is spinning around that. So you could see how that might be far more useful than selecting the entire cube. Now let's undo back a step again. So far, we've been spinning in this blue direction here, or around or about the Z axis. This has been controlled by the fact that we have the Z as the default up here. So remember again, when you pick a tool, this little bar here will have some elements you can change before using the tool. So notice if you click Y, it will change this now to a cursor that's for the Y. And with this face selected, if you click now and begin to spin around the Y, you'll be spinning this face in this direction. You can undo back and you can try X and you'll see that you're spinning in the X direction. This is kind of strange because this will 
almost be like that path type thing that we did in the Z direction. But just important to note that you can change what the default is here. Undo back one more time. And here's another way to think about using the tool. On the right hand side on your number pad, press the seven key to get to a top down view. And let's say we wanted to be more precise. So we wanted to, we were thinking of this as some sort of tunnel or duct work, or if this was circular, some sort of pipe, and we wanted it to have a 90 degree bend. So we could think through this. We could move the 3D cursor to a point that would help us rotate around it in 90 degrees. And that would actually be the point just beneath this here. So we could put it either on this corner and that would help us rotate 90 degrees around it. Or we could put it just right here and that would be another way to help us. Let's put it here. So with your cursor hovered there, go ahead and hold down shift and right click and you'll put that 3D cursor right there. And then with the spin tool, go ahead and make sure you have the Z direction. If you still had X or Y, make sure and click on Z. And then go ahead and click and drag to begin spinning this down. And you want to go 90 degrees. So you could either try to hover right over the 90 and eyeball this a bit. Or you could just let go and come down to your angle here. Double click and then click drag to select it all. Type 90 and press enter. And then 54 steps looks like way too much. So I'll just click and drag that down a bit to something like that. Now what's cool is you could orbit into 3D and you could decide to extrude this or do something else, but let's say you now wanted to spin it so it began moving up in the vertical direction. So try pressing one on your number pad. That gets us to the side view that I don't want. So press three and that gets me to the view I want. So I'm looking at the side where now I can think about how do I rotate this up 90 degrees? So again, let's move the 3D cursor Let's move it here. We want it to be in line with the face, but just above. So I'm using the grid to think about putting it one square above. So hover your cursor right there. Hold down shift and right click. That moves the 3D cursor there. And now we also want to make sure that we're using the spin tool in the correct direction. Now we could just hover over the red or the green in this cursor. But to make sure that I'm using the right one, we can also go up and click on X. And now we know we're going to use the X direction if we use this cursor here. So by clicking X, I'm locking that that's the direction I want. And then click hold down and drag this down. And once again, rather than us being picky about trying to get exactly to 90, we can go ahead and let go at any point, come back over to the angle here, type 90 and press enter. Then we can orbit in 3D and see that we've successfully taken this and turned 90 degrees around this corner and then turn 90 degrees up this corner. So the spin tool can be helpful for, I like to think of it as extruding, but along a rotation. And if you think about it this way, it's extruding along these different rotated paths. It also can be helpful for extruding or lathing an object upon itself. So what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and press tab to get back to object mode, then hold shift and then the letter A for add. And let's add a plane, go ahead and click on that. It's gonna be defaulting to wherever we had the 3D cursor. So press G and let's move it over to the side and click to set it down. Now let's press tab. We're going into edit mode for that particular shape, not for the one we were working on. Zoom in a bit, orbit around, and let's say that we were thinking about how to spin this so that it spun around upon itself. Let's go ahead and move the 3D cursor. So let's move it right to the edge here. So put your cursor along the edge and go ahead and hold down shift and then right click so it's there on the edge. Make sure that you're locking the X direction like I am here. And then with the spin tool, go ahead and begin spinning this. And you'll notice that now you're spinning this shape around itself. Now, of course, you could say that you actually only wanted to spin it halfway or spin it three quarters of the way. 
But if you have a shape where spinning it 360 degrees will create the new shape you need, then you go down to angle, click here and type 360 and press enter or return. And you've successfully created the shape all the way spinning it around itself. So of course, where you start that spin could leave behind a little hole that might be necessary for the kind of shape you need. Or if you put that 3D cursor right on the edge, then it could be spun around where there is no hole in the middle. And the shape that you started with helps you define what the final shape looks like. So think of the spin tool as something like extrude in certain circumstances. And then also think of it as a way to start with some geometry that you can spin upon itself. So you can get objects that are the types of objects that you might create using a lathe if you're thinking about it in real world terms. Okay, go ahead and experiment with the spin tool. Try some different shapes and use spin. See what you can achieve with them. And when you feel comfortable with experimenting in the abstract, you'll be ready to move on to the next video. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.